Get ready to learn Quicksilver, a game designed by Paul Imboden and Randy Field and published by Split Second Games. Table Gamer channel gets your games to the table quickly so you can play more and burn your rule book. Did he say burn my rule book? Well, use it for reference then. You get a thorough rules understanding before you play, or if you're just checking out the game, a thorough rules understanding before you might pay. A new addition starting with this video on Quicksilver is the How Would You House Rule This segment. I would love to hear your response to the scenarios. And also, if you like this level of quality in your gaming tutorials, let me know by clicking subscribe, liking, and commenting. It's free. In Quicksilver, you are an industrial revolution tycoon with a bit of extra time on your hands. So what better to do than challenge your pals to a grand airship race? Your goal is to upstage your pals, which we'll call your opponents, by being the first player to cross the finish line. But to get there, you have to clear all of the checkpoints in order, while maneuvering around obstacles and dealing with the not-so-fair skirmishes along the way. Movement in this game is a bit tricky. Your airship is bulky and of course it doesn't have an accelerator or a brake. Continuing to fly straight is near impossible as the placement of the hexagonal spaces on the board are not squared up with the board. This acts a bit like the effects of wind that will make you constantly readjust your course. During your turn, you will have the opportunity to play cards from your hand that either give you advantages or make attacks on your opponents that will slow them down, make them discard cards, or if their armor is weak enough, make them crash and lose a turn. You'll see the cards in this game have two uses. They can be played for the tactics in the text, or they can be used in certain circumstances as point value modifiers for movement and attacks. After the start of the race, you speed to each checkpoint in order. To clear a checkpoint, you have to rotate around it matching the rotation direction marked on the checkpoint marker. You have to clear both the entry line and the exit line of the checkpoint. Always imagine these lines as if they extended to the edges of the board. After clearing all of the checkpoints, then you race to the finish line. The first player who crosses and clears all checkpoints in order is the winner. Decide which side of the board your group will play. You can play the Paradise Fall side, which has a few obstacles, or you can play the New Covington side, which adds a few more obstacles, like a city map. Then decide how easy or difficult you want to arrange the course. As a group, agree on where to place your start-finish line, then place your checkpoints. Choose two checkpoints if you want to play a shorter game, three checkpoints if your game is going to be a bit longer. Choose what direction your airship has to rotate around the checkpoint to clear them, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Remember, you have to clear each checkpoint in order, so you can see how checkpoint placement can add to the length of the game and difficulty. Each player then grabs an airship and corresponding instrument panel of the same color. Set the velocity on the instrument panel to zero, and then set your armor to four. Each player has the option of placing one obstacle to add a bit more complexity to the game. You can choose to place a turret, 
cloud, or a mine. You have a couple limitations on where these obstacles can be placed. Obstacles can't be placed within four spaces of the start-finish line, and they can't be placed within three spaces of any checkpoint. Turrets need to be placed in the red-bordered areas. Mine tokens get placed in either cloud spaces or open-air spaces, and cloud tokens can be placed anywhere. We'll explain obstacles more in depth later. Then separate the turn order cards from the rest of the deck and set them aside. Shuffle the rest of the cards and deal five to each player, and the rest of the cards make up your draw pile. Then with your turn order cards, find the turn order card with a picture of Queen Victoria. Then add turn order cards so the total equals the total number of players. Shuffle these and then give one to each player, turn order side up. The player who gets the card with Queen Victoria on the flip side starts the game. The player to the right of the starting player gets to place his or her airship on or behind the start finish line first and then continues counterclockwise so the starting player places his or her airship last. Turn order then proceeds clockwise. Each turn you start by adjusting your velocity, but only by one increment up or down. Since your airship velocity is stopped before the start of the race, you will only be able to adjust to slow velocity on your first turn. The current velocity on your instrument panel shows how many dice you will roll for movement your minimum movement, and if you decide to speed up to the danger velocity on your instrument panel on a subsequent turn, you will need to discard two cards from your hand before you roll. After adjusting your velocity, you roll that many dice to figure how far you're going to move. The dice in this game are a bit different than your normal six-sided die. There are only numbers 1 through 4 on these dice, with the numbers 2 and 3 are doubled. After you roll, you then have the option to modify your movement by discarding a card from your hand and using it just for the point value in the lower left corner. This number or modifier can be added or subtracted from your roll. You can only discard one card like this on your turn to modify your movement roll. Before moving, you can choose to spend one of your movement points to pivot 60 degrees or 120 degrees. Use the 120 degree pivot in extreme cases, as this will also cause you to lose an armor you can never pivot 180 degrees on a turn. You must move all the rest of your movement points all in the same direction. The exception to this are as follows. If you finish your turn in the same space as another opponent, you would just then stay one space behind them. If you were to crash into a mountain or a checkpoint, your velocity would move to zero and you would lose one armor. Or if you were to stray off the board, you would lose a turn. More on these exceptions later. After you move, draw a card. 
and then discard down to five cards if you have more than five. Turns go clockwise until a player clears all the checkpoints in order and then crosses the finish line. You can continue to play out the game and see who finishes second, third, fourth, etc. Only if no one gets mad and flips the table first. A couple general rules that govern overall gameplay are as follows. Number one, after the first player clears each checkpoint, every other player gets extra motivation where they draw back up to five cards. Number two, the fair play rule. You can't make attacks on other players for the first two turns of the game, as you are all gentlemen and play fair, right? So let's talk about playing cards in this game and how attacks work. You will have cards that give you benefits, cards that cancel the effect of other cards, and cards that attack others. Cards that benefit you can be played during the phase of the turn as marked on the card. If the card does not specifically say when it is used, then these generally can be played at any time during your turn. Cards that cancel the effect of other cards can be played by you when it's your turn, or they can be played by you when it's not your turn, as a reaction to one of your opponent's cards. You are only allowed to make one successful attack against each opponent on your turn. There are two types of cards that attack opponents ranged attacks, and other cards that interfere with opponents. Ranged attacks must be played either before or after your movement, and only if you are in the specified range of your opponent. When you make a ranged attack, both the attacker and the defender roll two dice and compare the results. Then each player has the option to discard as many cards as they want and add the discarded card's point value to their roll. The player with the highest result of their die roll plus the point value on their discarded cards wins the battle. If the attacker wins, the defender is subject to the penalty written on the card. And if the defender wins, then the attack misses. In the case of a tie, the tie goes to the attacker. Other attack cards that interfere with opponents, like the card Sabotage, don't require a die roll and don't require you to be in range, but would be considered a successful attack. You can attack multiple opponents on your turn, but each player can only be successfully attacked once per turn. Since we were just talking about attacks, let's talk about a different type of attack, a collision. What happens when you just so happen to run into an opponent? As I said earlier, if your airship were to end its movement in the same space as another player's airship, there would be no collision. You can't occupy the same space as another airship and would just need to end your movement in the space right before your opponent's space. Now collisions are the fun part. If you are going to pass through the space with your opponent's airship, you have the option to either collide with them or sail around them. To sail around them, you have to discard a card from your hand and continue your movement. If you choose to collide, then forget discarding a card. You make an attack just like making a ranged attack, except whoever loses the attack loses an armor the attacker, or the defender. After the collision, then continue with the rest of your movement. Remember, if you or your opponent's armor reaches zero, you basically lose a turn, and then your armor refreshes to one. Explain more in detail, 
When your airship's armor reaches zero, you lay your airship on its side. The next turn, you get to set it back up facing the direction of your choice and repair it, setting the armor indicator to one. Then your turn's over. You do not get to play cards this turn or draw cards this turn. Then the next turn, you can take a normal turn. finish up with the rules of this game, it's time to talk about the effects of the rest of the obstacles you'll find along the race. Clouds, either on the board or cloud tokens, have no movement restrictions when passing through them. As long as you don't stop your movement in the cloud and then start your next turn in the cloud. So in that case, your movement gets cut in half, rounded up. If you crash into a red bordered area, meaning a mountain on the Paradise Falls side of the board, or a building on the New Covington side of the board, your velocity moves to zero and you lose one armor. Also, your airship stays facing the same direction. If you hit a checkpoint, it will work the same way as a red bordered area, where you will move your velocity to zero and lose an armor. And no, this doesn't count as clearing the checkpoint. The way a minefield token works is if you collide with it, you and all other players within two spaces of the minefield lose one armor. You continue your movement and the minefield marker is removed. If you go outside the map boundary, you lose a turn but there is no velocity or armor penalty taken. After you lose a turn, you would come back into play on the same space you exited, but facing the direction of your choice. If you end your turn within three spaces of a turret, then you get attacked by the turret. The turret always has an attack strength of five. Roll two dice and try to beat a five. If you get hit by the turret, you lose one armor. The turret only fires on you once unless you exit and re-enter its range again. That wraps up the rules, but before you call yourself an expert on this game, let's look at how this game plays. After that, you'll get to respond to the How Would You House Rule This segment. So, I'm gonna take one damage. You're gonna run straight into the mic. One, and two, two, three. Oh, boys. Can I play a card? Yeah, you can. Okay, yeah, I'll you play. gotta take your damage first. I won't play that. So I'm gonna take one damage. Yeah, very well. Well played, Cody. Well, I mean, I try to walk away. And I draw a card at the end of my turn. Yeah. But then, I'm gonna. I'm cranking up to fast. I'm going to use a ranged attack. That one's got some armor damage here. Eh, you know what? Colton, you're in the lead there. <laughs> ranged attack against Colton. So, you're within six spaces. Oh, but you got to be a four. Four. Mm. So, he wins. I win less. Nice of the I am going to throw another one on there. I love the one where you discard cards. This one? No, this is just a regular range. I'll just get a damage. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little like bluffing game going on in the meantime. One damage. I hit you. So now you're down to two. Sorry. But. So sorry. Sorry. Um, I see five is going to put me there, so I'm going to just, during movement, I'm going to sidestep and use my sidestep card so that it lets me scoop to the side. Two, three, scoop to the side, four, 
for there we go. So sidestep it. While playing this game and going through the rules, a couple questions came up. The rule book can never cover every scenario, and sometimes you have to house rule. I would like to see your response in the comments section on YouTube, moderntablegamer.com, or BoardGameGeek to the following two questions, and then I'll follow up with the majority ruling in the next video. Number one, if you pass through the same space as another player during the first two turns of the game, would discarding a card be mandatory since the first two turns are considered fair play? Number two, if you hit a minefield and your armor falls to zero, do you continue your movement or do you crash right there without continuing your movement? Thanks for watching. Hope you feel like you have a handle on Quicksilver. Please give feedback on how to improve these videos by using the email address listed below. If you like quality tabletop game tutorials, subscribe to our channel. It's free. And remember, if you're not playing games at least once a week, the planets won't align and we'll never achieve world peace.